after an intense volley of strikes targeting Iran's military activities in Syria, new information about the Israeli operation continues to trickle out, though many details remain uncertain. Now, a new rumor has emerged on social media claiming that Israel's F-15 Iram multi-role combat aircraft were able to get close to their targets without raising the alarm by using the same transponder codes as U.S. Air Force F-15E Strike Eagles and taking a circuitous route through Jordan and Iraq. According to a report from NBC News on May 1, 2018, three U.S. officials, all speaking anonymously, confirmed that Israeli F-15s had taken part in the mission on April 29, 2018. Based on earlier reports, those aircraft struck various targets in northwestern Syria, but focused their attention mainly on Iranian and Iranian-backed forces within the Syrian Arab Army's 47th Brigade base near Hama. The strikes leveled more than a dozen buildings and reportedly destroyed hundreds of unspecified missiles, among other weapons and equipment. How the jets were able to get to their targets and not prompt any significant response from Syrian air defense forces remains unclear. Unlike what has been the case after numerous previous strikes, the Syrian regime did not claim to have shot down any of the Israeli weapons and there was no footage of surface-to-air missiles speeding toward possible targets. Even more pertinent to this question is that the Israeli aircraft reportedly employed GBU-39B small-diameter bombs in addition to Delilah standoff missiles. The 250-pound class GPS guided glide bombs have a maximum range of a little more than 60 miles when an aircraft releases them from high altitude. This would have required the F-15I to enter Syria's airspace, at least for some amount of time and the aircraft would likely have appeared on Syrian radars, or Russian ones that are supposedly linked to the government's air defense network, before then. One unconfirmed rumor explains that the Israeli jets masked their approach by setting their identification friend or foe transponders to emit the same type of signal associated with U.S. Air Force F-15E Strike Eagles, as well as using false call signs to help keep up the ruse. These jets routinely conduct operations in eastern Syria in support of American forces and their local partners. The presence of strike eagles would not necessarily have aroused suspicions if they appeared on Syrian or Russian radars while over eastern Syria. Israel's aircraft then supposedly flew through Jordan, Iraq, and into eastern Syria before blitzing toward their targets. The strike package then reportedly refueled over Iraq and then returned to Israel via Jordan. Israel after many attempts to penetrate the Syrian airspace from the west they're now using the east, which is poorly covered by radars, where they can blend within the coalition jets. It's certainly one possible explanation, but it also raises a number of significant questions. If the aircraft had masked themselves as F-15s flying through Jordan and Iraq, they would almost certainly have had to do so with the active support of the former of those countries and the United States in order to avoid any potential confusion that could have exposed the entire route. American personnel, in particular, are likely on something of a heightened alert for anything out of the ordinary given reports of regular electronic warfare attacks on U.S. manned and unmanned aircraft in eastern Syria. It is not clear that the United States would have been able to convince even Jordan or Iraq to necessarily acquiesce to the plan. Though a staunch ally of the United States and traditional partner of Israel's, Jordan only recently ended a major diplomatic spat with the country over the murder of two Jordanian nationals outside the Israeli embassy in Amman in 2017. It's not at all certain if relations have improved in the interceding weeks to a place where the two might conspire on convert military action. Iraq, which maintains diplomatic and military ties with Russia, Iran, and Syria, seems even less likely to have agreed to such a plan. If they did not consent to the operation, Iraqi officials could easily have decided to pass along any advance warning of the strikes to the Assad regime. The Israeli aircraft could have obviated the need for tanker support by skipping the Iraq part of the run, instead cutting through southern Syria near the U.S. militaries at Danf Garrison, where American aircraft routinely patrol. 
This still would have involved flying through Jordanian airspace.